Yes, hello to you all once again. Welcome back to uh, Classic Dirt Bike TV, where we uh, like to think that we uh, showcase uh, the very best of those old school uh, vintage dirt bikes from way back in the day. Now, in the coming weeks, we will be uh, concentrating uh, my video postings on uh, some of the bikes that were at the 2023 uh, Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show. And if you didn't manage to make the show uh, this year, then uh, hopefully by subscribing uh, to my channel, you won't miss out on uh, at least 75% uh, of the machines that were on display over the course of the two days. So let's jump into our next uh, video from Telford and in this uh, next uh, posting we're going to take a look at a couple of bikes uh, belonging to X Kramer uh, Works Rider uh, Key 3 and we'll also be taking a look at a lovely uh, CCM that was built by uh, Jim Parker. So uh, without any further delay let's jump straight into the video and take a look at our first machine. Okay, so first up, we're going to take a look at uh, Keith Rees, uh, lovely 1978 uh, 440 Michael Twin Choker. And uh, this is yet another machine that's been uh, fully prepped by Keith, who uh, in the past has restored uh, quite a few of these old school uh, dirt bikes. And uh, looking at the condition of uh, this 440, it certainly looks like uh, a lot of time and effort has been lavished on this bike to get it looking uh, almost better than uh, brand new. But starting uh, with the bike's frame, which as you can see is uh, shining like a brand new pin with its uh, new paint job. And uh, for me personally speaking, uh, these 1978 or even the 1979 bikes uh, for that matter, uh, I still think are among uh, the nicest looking Michaels ever made and uh, even more so when you see them in this kind of condition. But again, I'm quite familiar with these uh, 440 piston port uh, Michael motors because uh, I did have an almost identical engine in my old uh, 1980 440 bike that I raced uh, back in the day. But these uh, 440s are such a sweet motor and they had uh, a good, nice, uh, broad spread of usable power it wasn't as brutal as its bigger brother, the, the big 490, but it was certainly a lot more easier to control. And as you can see on the motor's clutch side, it looks like Keith's done some work on the casing by having it coated in this bronze coloured Cerakote ceramic coating. And again, the old faithful Bing carburetor to feed that piston port motor uh, with its fuel and uh, as I've said in previous videos you just can't beat a good uh, Bing carburetor for making power provided of course that you uh, set these up uh, properly. But you can rest assured that if uh, Keith's done all of the work on this bike then it'll have been done uh, to a very high standard because uh, Keith used to ride these uh, type of Michaels back in the day and he was also uh, a works factory rider for Kramer in the early uh, 1980s. Now at the front end of Keith's bike, uh, although they may not look like it, these are still uh, Michael forks. It's just that the uh, fork bottoms have been uh, painted yellow with those uh, American Simons stickers uh, placed on them. And the fork sliders have also had some kind of uh, coating added to them, which uh, I expect is just to help protect them from damage by stones or other uh, debris. But even still, it uh, certainly adds another type of look to a standard uh, 78 uh, Michael uh, front end and uh, something uh, radically different to the original stock. Uh, chrome uh, stanchions. But with regards to these uh, rear shocks on Keith's Michael, I'm not entirely sure as to their make or uh, manufacturer, but they certainly look period correct for their time. They may even be a pair of old classic Olin's shocks with those remote uh, reservoirs. But uh, just like the rest of this bike, these have uh, also undergone a full refurbishment process when Keith uh, did uh, the rest uh, of the bike. 
Again, the exhaust expansion chamber is, of course, a remanufactured replacement for the original because uh, I suppose you can't expect a 45-year-old uh, dirt bike to still have its original uh, front exhaust pipe intact. But certainly this rear tailpipe is uh, the correct part for this bike, but uh, then again, uh, these tailpipes never seem to suffer the same abuse as their front uh, mounted counterparts. Although I have to say that uh, of all the many fine off-road bikes that Michael manufactured during the 1970s, these uh, 78s and even the 79 models uh, were not only popular choices for many riders at that time, they also sold in their thousands in uh, those years because they had a superb engine in that uh, piston port two-stroke uh, 440 power plant and of course uh, that steel uh, chassis was both uh, very strong and handled uh, superbly. Well this is just uh, one of two bikes that Keith had up for sale over the course of the weekend and uh, although this 1978 bike is maybe not fully original it's uh, certainly been refurbished to a very high uh, standard and it would make a great addition to somebody's uh, classic bike collection or even if you were looking for a decent twin shocker to have a go at racing then this uh, 440 would make a perfect uh, starter bike because as I said it did have a sweet two-stroke engine with an agile uh, chassis to match. So this uh, was Keith's other bike that he had up for sale at Telford and this time it's his big uh, Honda CR500 Evolution bike, uh, a real uh, man's machine, these Evo 500s and uh, certainly not the sort of machine for just a bit of a, a toddle around the racetrack of a weekend uh, with your mates. These CR500s uh, like to be driven hard and fast and there's only a small handful of riders out there who can ride these open-class ballistic missiles uh, to their full uh, potential. And it's only pilots with cojones the size of tennis balls that can hold the throttle uh, wide open in top gear on one of these puppies. But uh, in all fairness, uh, to say that these CR500s are quick is uh, without doubt the understatement uh, of the century. Now, I never actually managed to get any information uh, from Keith about this bike on the day that I grabbed these uh, video clips and pictures, although it uh, looks like that it could be a 1990 or even a 91 uh, model, but uh, don't uh, quote me on that particular fact because, as I said, uh, I was never uh, given that information on the day. So, again, I'm uh, just guessing here, but I expect that uh, all of you uh, evil experts out there will uh, put that fact uh, to rights. And so again, uh, you can understand why I'm not sure that uh, if our CR500's uh, been under any kind of uh, refurbishment uh, recently, but uh, it does look exceptionally tidy for a 1990s machine. But then again, uh, dirt bike uh, restoration is just one of the many talents that Keith has because uh, he also converts uh, vans into motorhomes uh, through his whole lab concepts uh, business. And when he's not doing that or restoring old dirt bikes, he tends to specialise in the restoration of old dirt bike uh, plastics. So uh, in that respect, he's quite another good contact to keep on your phone or your computer if you're in the process of uh, refurbishing an old uh, motorcycle that needs its plastics uh, brought uh, back to life. Now, of course, in the early 1990s, Honda was still uh, using the tried and tested steel frames on their big uh, 500s, and uh, it would be at least, I think, another six or seven years before they would then uh, make the change from uh, these heavy steel chassis to their now famous uh, alloy frames that we are now familiar with. And I'm, uh, pretty sure it was around 1997 that uh, Honda uh, made uh, that change from steel to uh, lighter 
alloy, but uh, this uh, steel frame here did have a fully uh, detachable uh, chassis uh, subframe that was uh, basically just held on by a few bolts, which uh, then gave you access to that uh, rear shock. Although, uh, what can you say about these uh, CR500 engines that hasn't already been said, but uh, it was certainly a single cylinder, two-stroke liquid-cooled engine that uh, in stock trim, as I remember, had a bore of around 89 millimeters and a stroke of uh, usually uh, 79 uh, millimeters as well. And it's said that these big uh, CR500s pumped out around the 64 horsepower mark, but uh, some riders would even say that it was uh, more than that, uh, or at least it just felt like it. But on the transmission side, it was uh, a quite a heavy-duty oil-cooled uh, clutch on this motor, and it uh, had to be uh, strong to cope with the grunt that was being served up uh, from that Honda uh, motor. But in terms of uh, cogs in the transmission, uh, its uh, five-speed gearbox uh, did have more than enough uh, speeds for your average uh, rider, and uh, as I said earlier, uh, you were a very special individual if you could hold this bike in top gear with the throttle uh, pinned open. And uh, for most riders, uh, this CR500 had almost certainly uh, one gear more than it ever uh, required. Although having said that, uh, if you were a top Evo rider in the 1990s, then the chances are that uh, one of these uh, Honda rocket ships would uh, be at the top of your wish list uh, because it did handle uh, superbly. It was uh, super quick and it also had uh, this awesome two-stroke motor that uh, would just scare you shitless if you didn't uh, keep your wits about you. But on the front end of our early 90s Honda, it was uh, usually a pair of 45mm uh, leading axle upside down uh, Showa forks that were bolted onto this bike. And uh, these uh, forks did have uh, plenty scope uh, for tuning uh, to the rebound uh, and the damping. But even straight uh, from the crate, these uh, suspension systems did perform very well, but uh, again, you could improve matters further by just experimenting with different uh, spring rates or even different weights of oil. But uh, one other alternative uh, was just to hand the forks over to a suspension specialist and they would then uh, set them up to your own uh, personal rider weight and uh, track conditions to make them perform even better. So as we move on to the back of our CR500, the Showa rear shock once again was excellent in its stock standard trim and this also had a piggyback style remote gas and oil reservoir that was mounted onto the right hand side of the bike just to try and keep it in the flow of the uh, ambient uh, air just to try and help keep it cool but uh, once again uh, this shock did have uh, plenty scope to tune it for that uh, rebound and damping. Now a substantial box section alloy swing arm on our Honda with those uh, red CR500 uh, graphics stamped on the side but uh, again uh, working in conjunction uh, with that rear monoshock suspension unit and its linkage system uh, this alloy uh, swing arm uh, rear shock combination uh, worked extremely well in all manner of uh, track uh, conditions. Now it certainly wasn't unusual for these big 500 EVOs uh, to not have their original exhaust expansion chambers uh, fitted uh, when they got uh, later in life because uh, by the nature of uh, their design and where these pipes uh, were located on the bike uh, they did uh, tend to get battered and uh, dented by stones and other debris on the track and uh, often uh, constant repairs just uh, led to the pipe 
uh, being replaced altogether as uh, Keith has done here on uh, this bike. But once more, this alloy uh, tailpipe was uh, better protected from the worst of the track uh, debris and these parts uh, certainly did last longer than the front expansion chambers. But in terms of uh, doing a quick uh, refurbishment, this uh, CR500 uh, still looks mostly in its stock trim with uh, all of the correct uh, Honda uh, flash red uh, colour scheme and the proper white uh, radiator scoops uh, on uh, both sides. But certainly another cracking example of uh, one of these big CR500 Honda Evolution uh, rocket ships and uh, as I said another of the bikes that were on display and uh, offered up for sale over the two days of the Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show. But another uh, quite impressive looking bike that I came across at the Telford Show was this beautiful uh, CCM that was uh, built by Jem Parker. Uh, now Jem has a very good reputation for building uh, these kind of twin shock uh, race bikes and in the past I've seen some very nice JBR Honda uh, four-strokers that have come out uh, of Jim's workshop but uh, I must say uh, this is the first uh, big CCM that I've ever seen him uh, building and uh, judging by the quality and the finish on this bike it's certainly up there uh, with some of the other exceptional creations that he's built in the past. But once more, uh, I wasn't supplied with any information on the parts that were used on this bike and uh, most of the machines that were on display at the show did have uh, some form of uh, information boarding uh, sitting next to them so that you could identify exactly uh, what you were uh, looking at. So uh, I don't know the particulars of this uh, latest uh, creation from Gem, but uh, I still think that it's based on a 1980 uh, CCM because of the chrome frame and that uh, lovely uh, gold tank and of course the design of the seat which uh, were all period correct parts used on Alan Clues's uh, 1980 model. Now as you already know this bike is powered by the old uh, BSA B50 power plant and this featured motor here is one of the rarer uh, four valve engines but uh, the initial successes of these CCMs was all uh, down to the legendary Alan Clues who uh, took what was a pretty bog standard four-stroke road bike motor and then uh, retuned it for more uh, power and eventually turned it into one of the best British built four-stroke race engines of its time. Now I'm guessing here once again but I'm pretty sure that this will be a, a three-speed uh, gearbox although uh, there were uh, four-speed alternatives also available at this time but uh, not as many of them uh, were actually uh, made and uh, the three-speed gearbox uh, was pretty much the standard spec on most of the early uh, CCMs. But as I said a four-valve cylinder head this time when uh, a lot of the earlier Clues bikes just had the stock uh, one exhaust and one inlet valve, but uh, still an absolute belter uh, of an engine. And of course another innovative idea by Alan Clues was to mount uh, these footrest hangers onto the engine casings rather than having them uh, welded or bolted onto the bike's chassis. And so at the front end of our CCM, you can see that the, the bike has very long legs here at the front, but uh, not the stock standard CCM forks, of course, because uh, it looks like Gem has uh, fitted a set of suspension units uh, from a much uh, later bike. But uh, nevertheless, these uh, look the goods and certainly look strong enough to cope with anything that the big CCM will encounter uh, on the racetrack. And uh, once more, a nice set of twin leading shoe front stoppers. 
Uh, not an original CCM brake and hub, uh, because uh, those kind of original parts nowadays are just simply impossible uh, to find, but this uh, brake here looks like a nice uh, alternative. And again, we have a stock old school uh, drum brake on the back of our Gem Parker Clues Classic, and I must say it looks uh, superb sitting alongside those gold wheels and that chrome plated uh, chassis. Now the bike's rear shocks are a pair of uh, piggyback style suspension uh, units but their actual uh, manufacturer is unknown but uh, you can also see that short stubby exhaust pipe sticking out there from the right hand side of the engine that gave you that unmistakable CCM growl when that four valve motor uh, got fired into life. But again, I have to say, another uh, absolute belter of a bike from the Gem Parker workshop. And uh, whether this bike was actually built for a customer or being just offered for sale on the day, I'm not entirely uh, sure. But uh, somebody's going to enjoy themselves uh, with this bike, uh, whether they are racing it or even just putting it into their own private uh, motorcycle uh, collection. But these last uh, three machines that we've just featured were uh, just a short sample of the many more bikes that I'm shortly to feature from the 2023 Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show. So there you have it. I do hope you enjoyed uh, that walk around that lovely trio of machines from the Telford Show. Uh, two lovely bikes there from uh, K3 and of course that uh, fantastic uh, CCM that was uh, put together by Jem Parker. Now coming up in my next uh, video posting, we're going to continue our theme of bikes from the 2023 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. And coming up next, we'll be taking a look at a couple of uh, machines that were on display at the Rind Tut Wasp stand over the course of the day. So uh, firstly, we'll take a look at this uh, beautiful uh, Rind Tut uh, solo bike that was uh, powered by a superb four-stroke uh, Norton engine and uh, after that we'll take a look at this uh, superb uh, sidecar outfit and uh, this machine uh, was also powered by a four-cylinder uh, 750 Honda uh, four-stroke uh, motor so uh, look out for these two lovely machines coming up in my next uh, video posting here on CDB TV but uh, once again thanks for uh, tuning in to my uh, video channel and uh, I'll see you again uh, very soon so until then it's bye for now <laughs>